Uh, the double slit experiment. The double slit experiment. The double slit experiment. So quantum physics, everyone's favorite topic. Well, it's one of my favorite topics. I have a question for you. How many people have been in the awkward situation where you're driving in traffic on the road, on the freeway usually, and you get this inkling to look over and when, what do you see? You see someone looking right back at you. Mm -hmm. Strange. It happens to me all the time. Here's a, here's a tip for you. You are thinking of the exact same person that person is thinking. What is that person looking at? <laughs> so I have a, a topic that I want to jump in with you guys called the double slit experiment. Now this is a really tough thing to explain, so in a little bit of time I have, I'm going to ask for three volunteers. Are there, are there three volunteers that would be willing to come up and join me up here to help me demonstrate this? Jeffrey? Doug? One more? Anyone? Kristen? <laughs> Alright, you guys can stand. Uh, you're fine right there, Jeffrey. You can come in the middle, Doug. Perfect. And Kristen over here, just stand right here, spaced out. Okay, so I want to point something out. These are not props. These are people helping me illustrate the props. <laughs> my props are right here, right in between them. Those are my two slits. So there was a, uh, a scientist in 1801 that did an experiment where he shot a single photon of light. Now, to put that in perspective, that's as small as one electron. He shot one photon of light at two slits. And what happened, and to demonstrate, I've got my two pins. He shot one photon of light and it would go through like this. It would go through and hit a stop. It would go through and hit a spot. Some of these <coughs> photons would be hitting all over and it would be hitting all over. And what would happen is there were spots all over. Sorry, Addy, I'm decorating your. <laughs> so they formed these patterns of. More than one, more than two slits, which was very peculiar. So the scientists had the great idea to put a camera on this, to, on, on the action to see what was happening. When he added the camera to the action, the pattern changed. And what happened was these slits were going through, and instead of going all over the place, they would just go through, and they would hit just these spots here, and they would just form two columns, two columns of slits rather than many. Thank you, volunteers. <laughs> Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, so what did we, what did we just witness? If you take a, take a look at your sheet there, it does uh, a job of, inter of showing what happens. So the first example is on your right. It creates a wave, which creates an interference pattern, which displays on the optical. What changes when the observer or a camera is, is put on this experiment as it changes the whole makeup of the photons going through the double slits. So what's happening here? These photons are single, this very, the smallest piece of light that you can get. It's a single photon of light. It cannot be split any smaller than that. But yet it's acting in a way that is doing two things at once. So on your right you'll see that it's performing like a wave, and on your left you'll see it's performing like a particle. Well, in 1801, our friend Thomas Young discovered that light has something called the uh, particle wave duality. Now, this is very fascinating because it, it begs the question that things can be two things at once. We've been so conditioned to think in two ways. It either is or isn't. Is it a particle? Is it a wave? In this case, particle and wave, or particle or neither particle or wave. This, this test suggests that we should think in more than just a polarized type of way of thinking. There is an in-between. There is something called duality in these particles. Now, it begs the question, what is it? Well, it, it, what it is is consciousness. It's the observing. It doesn't matter if it's a dog observing it, if it's a person observing it, or just simply a, a camera. It's the observing that absolutely changes the whole makeup of the physics itself. 
Now, why is this important? Because it, it kind of brings us into this whole new way of thinking that what is our consciousness? Is it just simply eyes? Is it just simply observing? Well, this test suggests that we are in this field of energy, and it is our consciousness that collapses the wave of the energy into a particle. So at all times, there is this cloud of, I believe the term is mathematical probability, and it takes the consciousness to collapse that probability into existence. So we, are, we find ourselves in this really complicated makeup. And I like the quote by Albert Einstein, there is no coincidence, only the illusion of coincidence. Now that person driving next to you on the freeway, how, do you, how are you to know that they didn't feel this time con or this uh, particle continuum collapse in your brain? Maybe, who, who's to say? We haven't got that far in science yet to know that whether or not we are feeling or not feeling these certain things that are beyond a shadow of doubt happening <coughs> all around us. And it also brings us to the question of, you've all heard it, if a tree falls in a forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? This test suggests that it, it does not make a sound. You could get into if plants have consciousness, and I happen to believe that they do, but it, it is a, uh, a bit of a conundrum we find ourselves in because Albert Einstein was, I, and I use him because he's one of the most uh, uh, traditionally embraced scientists. Everyone mm -hmm. can sort of find some level of his work to relate with. Interesting enough, he found that his quantum experiments were similar on a small macro, micro level as they were on a giant macro, I'm sorry, micro level, same as the macro level. So our, our planets resemble ourselves, interestingly enough. So with that, uh, I hope that you, I hope that that's put a different spin on the way <laughs> you can view the world around us. And next time you are thinking about someone and they, they happen to call you, remember that maybe that's not a coincidence as well. There may be something, there may be a connection. And I want you to ponder on the idea, where do I end and you begin?